Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today I'm going to show you how I created this floral peekaboo tumbler inspired by the clear decals created by Brittany Barnes from Gracefully Created LLC. As always, all the products I use will be listed in the description below and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. For this design, I started with a fully prepped and sanded 20 ounce straight skinny from Parish Tumblers. And then I'm using a Wet n Wild makeup brush. I grabbed this from a dollar store. They're also available on Amazon. And I am painting on Miss Lillian's No Wax Chalk Paint in Winchester Blue. This blue is such a beautiful deep um, color. It's just the perfect navy for this cup. And I am just lightly applying the first coat of paint over the entire surface of the cup. And the reason why I really like this paint is because it's self leveling and it dries in about 10 minutes or you can speed it up with a heat gun and make it even faster. So I'm just applying a nice even just thin first coat to the entire surface of the cup, letting that dry and then I'm going to go into a second coat. After that second cone of paint is fully dry, I'm going to mix five milliliters of epoxy because I feel like that is the base amount that allows you to get your epoxy thoroughly mixed. And then I'm going to apply between one and two milliliters of epoxy over the entire surface of the cup. What I'm doing here is I'm just dipping my fingers into the epoxy and just making sure to glide it on, giving a nice smooth layer over the entire surface of the cup. You can see I'm really trying to work it on and I'm not adding too much, but just like the bare amount to serve as the like the adhesive for the glitter that we'll be applying to the cup. Once that epoxy is nice and even and streak free, I'm going to grab Sailor's Moon from Bougie Glitter Boutique. I absolutely love this glitter. It is a beautiful navy that I just can't get enough of. And I am just going to apply it over the entire surface of the cup. We're not doing any kind of ombres or using any second colors. So I am just not holding back and just making sure that I'm getting great coverage and not forgetting the butt. I let that dry for about two hours, then I seal it and go in with two coats of epoxy, and now it is time to expose that little bit of stainless steel at the top of the cup. I am using my Dremel with 120 grit flap wheel, and all I am doing is I am taking that flap wheel and going around that top rim, exposing just the tiniest sliver of stainless steel to make sure that my next coats of epoxy really have something to adhere to. And then I like to come in with my sanding block and just smooth out that top rim so you don't have any pokey bits if you are to drink out of this cup without the lid. Now, once all that's done, it would not be a Cami Page Boutique tutorial if I did not bring out the orbital sander, but I am going to get my orbital sander going with 120 grit sanding paper, and I am just holding my orbital in one place and rocking the cup back and forth to knock down any high spots and create a nice even surface for my final coats of epoxy. This I have found is the best trick to get a super smooth cup when you're going into those final design elements and your final coats of epoxy. I know I'm saying this a lot, but one thing I want to point out is that you do not want to use the orbital on the corners or like the rounded edges because it has a tendency of sanding off that glitter and all epoxy work and you do not want to do that. Now I saw this hack on TikTok and I thought I'd give it a try and it's it's okay. It's so what you use is you use your uh, scrapbook paper cutter to mark a straight line on the cup and it works all right. Um, I feel like it's just easier to use painter's tape but I wanted to give it a try but I did get that nice straight line. I guess it's somewhat straight. It wasn't completely straight um, on the cup to use as reference for the vinyl wrap that we are going to be using and you can see it here. This was a pain to weed and I have to emphasize I did not get the transfer tape perfectly straight on this and it did cause some issues so make sure to take your time don't get as impatient with decal day as i do i, I will completely admit it um, and make sure that your uh, transfer tape is nice and adhered to your vinyl before we go into the wrap now i am using my ruler here to cut the edges of this vinyl to get it as straight as possible because of how intricate this design was i really wanted to make sure that the edges of the vinyl and the transfer tape were as straight as possible so that when i apply the vinyl to the cup it would line up as much as possible granted it's never perfect but that's why I'm using the vinyl and or the ruler so to say to cut that straight edge so that I could get it lined up on the tumbler as best as possible and set me up for success with such an intricate design. 
Once I had the transfer tape and the paper backing trimmed, I am just pulling up just like a little bit of even more of the vinyl backing just to make sure that I'm exposing about an inch to an inch and a half of that vinyl so that I can adhere it to the cup. So you just peel it back, cut off this little bit of paper. It does not have to be perfectly straight. And then you can go into lining the vinyl up on your cup. You can see here that I did use that line that I created with my um, scrapbook cutting paper, but it wasn't perfectly straight and I had some issues, so I actually had to pull it off and do it again. But after I got that lined up, it was time to adhere the vinyl to the cup. Now, this was a huge, huge, huge pain in the butt because again, I was complaining that, or not complaining, admitting, better word, that I did not take the time to really adhere the transfer tape and get it all pushed down to the vinyl and I paid for it dearly. So as you can see here, I'm applying the vinyl to the cup, but again, since I did not have the transfer tape pushed down the way it needed to to really grab that vinyl well some of the more detailed part of this print got stuck to the backing paper and did not come off I'll show you how I overcame that but it was pretty annoying and it made this process a lot longer than it should have been but please take your time make sure that the transfer tape is good and adhered evenly over the entire surface of the vinyl because it will make this process so much easier but this pattern is absolutely beautiful and I will link it below in the description so that you guys can snag this because I thought it was absolutely beautiful. And if you didn't want to do the peekaboo like I am doing here, you could definitely grab some of that beautiful like ombre vinyl that's out there and get a really similar look without torturing yourself like I decided to with this design. So just to kind of spoil alert, I kind of already gave it away, but we are going to be using this to peekaboo the cup and that's why it was so important to sand the cup as much as we did before going into this step so that we would have a nice smooth surface and no pokey bits when we applied our spray paint. After the vinyl was good and attached, make sure that you, I, I really have to emphasize you go around and just make sure all the vinyl is well and pushed down before trying to remove the transfer tape because this is something that really you need to pay attention to because you could rip all the vinyl that you just spent all that time applying. So one trick that I found really works for doing this is you pull the transfer tape as at sharp of an angle as possible. So like almost as like rolling it back as like pretty quick and it allows that vinyl to really stick to your cup. It's the best way to do this, but I'm also, as I'm going around, pushing down the vinyl as much as possible so that you don't have any lifting because that will cause the spray paint to get underneath the vinyl if there are any bubbles. So just take your time, remove the transfer tape, and then I had a little bit of an overlap. I do that on purpose because the last thing I want is for my vinyl to be too short and then the whole design be ruined. So I'm just taking a little bit of painter's tape, lining it up with the seam in which I want to cut running my exacto knife down that and then removing any extra vinyl now this one did not meet up perfectly um i could have resized it to do that because this is technically a seamless pattern but because i cut down this pattern that i purchased to be like to fit this cup it didn't meet up exactly you could honestly mess with it as if you wanted to i just put a nice piece of vinyl over the seam and it's fine and good to go but whatever floats your boat so to highlight even more of the things that kind of went wrong with this cup, um, you can see all of the pieces of vinyl that were not adhered to that transfer tape because I was impatient. All I did was take my X-Acto knife, lift them off of the backing, and then move them to get them in place. Now, this was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be because the design's pretty like straightforward as to where the pieces go, so it wasn't hard to get them lined up at all. And honestly, just applying them to your X-Acto knife and just getting them into place and pushing them down is not nearly as hard or as daunting of a task as you thought it would but yay me for being impatient and having to do this in the first place after the vinyl was applied I really wanted to make sure to cut a straight line at the bottom and top of the cup so that my vinyl had a nice like perfectly crisp edge so this is the vinyl cutter from Cami Page Boutique this cutter was created so that you could really cut vinyl super easy while not cutting yourself I have had vinyl cutters in the past where they were pretty flimsy and they would move on me quite a bit. So I designed this vinyl cutter to really have like some 
meat to it to where it would stay in one place and give you perfectly crisp lines every time with minimal effort. And also the blade is twice as big as like the blades that you see on other vinyl cutters. So I really wanted to make sure that you're getting a high quality product that really made this process super easy. Once I had the vinyl cut, um, you can see here, I just took my X-Acto knife to kind of remove those little pieces, but you can see how easy they are to remove. And I just did that at the top and bottom, making sure I had enough room at the top and bottom rim so that when I did my spray paint, it would come out with a perfectly crisp edge that even mom would be proud of. Once all the vinyl was taken out, I did an ombre with a green and blue spray paint. I will list the colors down in the bottom of the description, but I did the green in the middle of the cup and then I ombre it to this light blue. It is like the subtlest difference, but I think it adds just like a nice cool little touch. You could disagree with me, but I really liked it. But now is the most satisfying part of any peekaboo and it is pulling the vinyl off. Now I did use removable vinyl when I cut this design just so I did not have a huge headache afterwards because trust me I've made that mistake before with using permanent vinyl. It works I mean it works really well but it leaves residue and it is such a pain in the butt to get off. So using the removable vinyl especially with a design that is as intricate as this one is will save you a ton of heartache and just promise me it, or not promise me, trust me, I'm, I'm looking out for your best interest on this. Now, there are a couple of places where you can see some overspray, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that um, here in a minute. So don't worry, um, I didn't get the vinyl pushed down as well as I should have, even though I preached about it over and over in this tutorial, but learn from my mistakes and take my advice, um, even if I won't do it myself. Now I'm gonna show you two options here. So the first one I'm showing you is alcohol. This is a huge pain in the butt, but if you don't have acetone, you're gonna need some elbow grease and really put it in to like make this work. It takes a, it does take the spray paint off, but it is a huge pain in the butt. So you can see there, the alcohol did do it, but I did have to come back in with my X-Acto knife to clean up those lines. So if you have alcohol, great. However, the king of the show is if you use acetone. Acetone takes this off so much faster. You can really, you surprisingly control it a lot better and you get those nice crisp lines. So I recommend acetone, don't use alcohol and just save yourself some time. After I was done fixing my oopsies, I went into a coat of epoxy and then it was time to apply our beautiful floral decals. Now these are designed by Brittany Barnes and are printed by Gracefully Created LLC. And these are amazing decals because you can see there that they have the white backing and they're printed on clear vinyl so that they're not gonna show in your design. So what I'm doing here is I am trimming the sides and the bottom to where I don't have any of that ex like excess that could like mess it up potentially and cutting as close to the bottom as possible. Now, one thing I ran into with this tumbler and actually I think it worked out for the best is that the bottom is a little more rounded than I had planned. So you can see there that like some of the peekaboo is showing and yeah, it looks kind of wonky here, but I like the way that turned out. So I just cut off a little bit of the backing up on the cup to where it's not on the rounded surface. So where I have a completely flat part of the cup because if it's rounded, then you get some of that bubbling and it's not cute and it's not what you want. But then I just made sure that the vinyl was um, straight on the cup. Then just used my squeegee to push the vinyl off of the backing like you can see there and just made my way around the cup. These are super easy to apply. They're just like any kind of vinyl wrap that you would do um, with any other design. I went a little fast in a couple areas, so the floral kind of folded on itself, but I just take my X-Acto knife, pull it up, and push it back down. This stuff is super forgiving, so don't think that you have to get it like perfectly perfect on the first try you don't need to. Um, I had a little bit of ex excess. So what I did is, is instead of having a super hard line where I would just cut a straight line of the florals, I kind of weaved my scissors in and out and made it to where it was kind of an organic end to the decal. I think this really helped and it came out so amazing because you can't see where it ended and where it began. So see that right there? Oh, it's amazing. Brittany and Judy did such a good job here. Um, you'll definitely have to check them out. This is just one of the designs 
designs that Brittany has done. There are so many options and I highly recommend them. Once the florals were applied, it was time for vinyl decal time. Now this SVG is available on the Cami Page Boutique website and I cut it using three layers. I did a white permanent vinyl as the back, then I came in with a textured silver and then finished it off with an orange metallic vinyl and I think it came out beautiful. So here I just applied it to the cup, used my transfer tape and pulled it off and then it was time to seal my vinyl. Now this step is super important. I just apply a pretty healthy layer over my decal and I let it dry for about two hours and it prevents my decal from lifting and moving and causing me all kinds of headaches. So apply it, let it dry for about an hour to two hours so that it doesn't get milky under epoxy and then it's time to add your layer of epoxy. Now this is about 25 milliliters um, and I wanted to do that to make sure that I got a nice good flood coat over the decal and then also the flowers. And you're probably thinking to yourself, man Brooke, that back scene looks horrible and same does the peekaboo at the bottom. I wanted to make sure to get a coat of epoxy underneath this so that I could get really great coverage and fix all of these kind of issues, even though they're not issues, but make them beautiful with a coat of epoxy between all of the final work we just did and the beautiful floral decals. I let that fully cure, torch the heck out of it so there weren't any bubbles and then it was time to move into the next steps. See, I told you we'd make it beautiful. So what I'm doing here is I am taking painter's tape and I am following the edge of the floral decals. Now, because we made sure that we were at the straight piece or the straight part of the cup, it makes this process a lot easier versus if we were to have gone on that rounded edge. So I'm just making sure to really push down that painter's tape so that we don't have any lifting or bleeding of the spray paint that we're going to use. And then I use just saran wrap to cover the rest of the cup to protect the design. Took it outside, spray painted it that pretty uh, blue that we were using. And while the spray paint was still wet, I tried this, it is amazing, I highly recommend it. I came in with Misty Mint from Bougie Glitter Boutique and it stuck amazingly. Like I didn't have to use any adhesive whatsoever. It just created this amazing like glitter coverage. I didn't have to use epoxy or anything else and it stuck in place. I did not need a second coat. I was completely blown away. I let that glitter dry for probably about an hour, maybe 45 minutes, and then it came in with some alcohol and acetone because there was just a little bit of bleeding underneath the painter's tape. This cup really gave me a bunch of problems, but it's okay, we fixed it. And I'm just coming in with a Q-tip and just cleaning up that edge so that we don't have any bleeding or kind of unfortunate spots on the cup. And then it was time to add the seam to the back of the design to kind of hide that little peekaboo place where the design wasn't seamless. So I have to say that this was actually a pretty great surprise. I love the way this turned out. I just decided to cut this at an eighth of an inch wide um, on that orange metallic vinyl. And I think it just added a nice little pop to the whole cup that for some strange reason in my mind brought it all together. So I applied the strip and then I cut it around the little leaf that you can see there. So trimmed it just around that leaf so you can see it almost seems like it disappeared into it. I sealed this sucker because I did not want it to lift and I let it dry for about 45 minutes before moving into our coats of epoxy. I also used quick coat to seal the bottom of the cup because I did not want that glitter moving on me and I didn't feel like going outside and spray painting it. And I can't believe how well this stuff actually sealed in the glitter. It like, I was mind blown by first using spray paint as an adhesive and then this stuff like the glitter did not move at all so highly recommend this quick coat stuff go check it out i went in with two final coats of epoxy and this cup was done thank you so much Brittany, for designing such beautiful florals and judy you always have the best decals so you guys should go run and check them out as always, I hope this tutorial inspires you and I can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions about the steps shared, please feel free to reach out and I will be more than happy to help. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you're notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.